Well, hello, you guys. Hello. Welcome back to, to our the channel. channel. <laughs> Did you just think you had yes. another one? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Welcome back to the uh, channel. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. The chat is really tired if you see his little eyes today. So anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so if you clicked on this video, you know, we're kind of talking about things we wish we would have known when we mm -hmm. were younger. Like if I had to write a little letter to like, dear younger Tori, mm -hmm. these are some of the things that I would yes. say. Just to explain why we want to do this, this video is legitimately the heart of our channel. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to be recording a new, like a little welcome to our channel thing because originally whenever this started a little over two years ago Tori had the intro video yeah. and now it's grown so much done so many different things then we pulled chatty on the but channel the heart of this channel is we want to be the people that we wish we had and we yeah. we want to share the things we wish we knew so this yeah. video is like right up that alley so we're going to be giving 10 tips on what we wish we knew whenever we were younger probably mm -hmm. more there's also going to be a fun probably the most fun cooking with chad segment there's ever been yes. ever brought yes. to you by green chef later on in the video so yes. stay tuned for that so and thank you green chef for sponsoring yeah. that portion of the video we love them and y'all just you just section, you, you section. just you just wait for that section all right mm -hmm. yeah ready my first one dear younger Tori is wait hold on I don't know hers and she doesn't know mine right now so this yeah. is gonna be kind of fun to play off of each other yeah okay my first one is and this is actually something Chad taught me don't make decisions out of desperation or pressure take your time slow down and pray because I feel like I made so many decisions because I felt rushed or I felt mm -hmm. pressure or I felt like I was desperate for money so I just scarcity yeah yeah, mindset. like the scarcity mindset. And I wish that I would have known if I were to just to take my time, mm -hmm. things are going to work out and there's other options. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was my first one. Yeah, I love that. I, I mentioned this actually in a prompt this podcast recently, but whenever like a potential job offer comes to a nice way, we always ask ourselves this question. If we had an additional $100,000 in our bank account, would we accept this job partnership? Mm -hmm. The answer is typically no, because if we're ever on the fence about one, yeah. that's how we make our decision Yeah, because it helps us stay true to who we are and what we want to do. And so, yeah. but there's so many types of things, even in relationships, you know, yeah. if I felt content with myself alone, would I be willing to accept the way this person I'm dating is treating me? Yeah. We always say, if it's a maybe, it's a no. Yep. It's That's a, another tip. It's a navy. <laughs> it's a navy. <laughs> okay, you're, you're just, All right. Okay. My first tip. My first tip is quit struggling with FOMO. Do you know what FOMO yeah. is? The fear of missing out. I realized I was doing so many things because I felt yeah. like I was missing out. Oh, if people are doing this, oh, I need to go do that. It just led to really unhealthy life choices. Mm -hmm. And it, I didn't even want to do those things. Yeah. I think I just low key wanted to find my way into fitting in. Yeah. Or I wanted to make sure I didn't miss something. I ended up losing pieces of who I am mm -hmm. because I was chasing who I want other people to think I am. Yeah. And that wasn't a good move. Yeah. My next one is actually live and enjoy your life. I heard this quote by Lisa Turkhurst and she said, an overwhelmed schedule leads to an underwhelmed soul. It's something we still struggle with, mm -hmm. truly, but I think it's so important to actually like stop and smell the roses and enjoy your life because a lot of times when I look back at my childhood, I love it, but because I was so competitive and at the dance studio seven days a week, hours a day, it's like, I feel like I missed out on some of like yeah. the fun yeah. childhood beach days and sleepovers mm -hmm. and like kid stuff sometimes. I feel like I was just always so competitive and I feel like that made life speed by really quickly. And so the season that you're in is important and a gift. Like every single day actually is a gift from God. Like we're supposed to rejoice and be glad in it. And so if we're just wishing our life away to get to the next season, yeah. mm -hmm. we're gonna be on our deathbed being like, what just happened? Yeah, and, and yeah. that really exposes something in you too. Because we struggle with this ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we're not like throwing it at you. Yeah. I wrote it in a YouTube description the other day. Do you remember mm -hmm. the one about the drive-thru? Yep. If you live that way where you're like, oh, if I only had this, I would be okay. Mm -hmm. Or you're constantly living for the next stage of your life. Yeah. You're going to constantly be living for the next stage of your life. And it's not yeah. going to stop. It's not going to until. Always something. Yeah. There's always something. And I imagine driving through a fast food drive through mm -hmm. ordering, going to the window, picking it up, then circling back around and having a new order. And there's never any time to actually appreciate. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of food analogies in this one. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just realized that. Good lord. We love food. Yeah. Everyone can relate to a good meal. Speaking you know? of food. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Chad. This meal is brought to you by Green Chef. If you want to know what that is, stay tuned. What is Green Chef, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company that makes eating well easy and affordable. With plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, paleo, or keto. And the best part is, they have meals that are hand-picked and delivered to your front door. What else could you ask for? Let's find out what we're cooking today. All right, on the menu tonight is a little cheesy baked penne with sausage. Our patrons actually picked out this meal. What we love is it's super quick and easy. They give you step-by-step -step instructions with pictures and chef tips and all the things. So, and everything comes pre-packaged, pre-proportioned. Please salt your water. Please salt your pasta water, because guess what? You're gonna come back and use this later on. Wow. Now we're gonna go to the sausage, and we're gonna put these in there. We put them in on a ripping, roaring hot pan, because we like our sausage to get a little crispy bits. We're a little, a little crispy over here. <laughs> Sue Chef Tori, gonna add in the mushrooms and the peas. Can I give you a little hand? Oh. Do you want to know a cool little pro tip to know if your pasta is cooked al dente? You don't have to pay me for this tip. First, first tip, please, for the love of Green Chef, do not throw it against the wall. Take it out, put a little strainer, let it cool off. Mmm, if, if it has a little resistance, that's cooked al dente, and it's time to get your pasta water. Mmm, you want to save about a fourth of a cup of that? That's liquid gold, folks. Now we're gonna strain these. Now you wanna drizzle some olive oil. You wanna give that a shake, but I add a little um, basil, because I love it if it sticks to the pasta. Mmm. You can actually smell the basil cooking on the hot pasta. Now we're gonna add all this good stuff to it. You don't wanna lose all that sauce right here. So I put my pasta water in there, and I mix it around, and it helps get the last little bit of flavor. Get in my belly. Green Chef makes everything easier mm -hmm. for anyone's lifestyle. So true. Whether you're trying to impress a hot date, or you're running a little late, or you're trying to give food to someone named Kate, Green Chef is for you. Dear Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the YouTube channel. Thank you for our, our subscribers. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I can get used to this. So good. Mm -hmm. We have a $90 off coupon code if you go to greenchef.us slash 90masters and use the code 90masters. You get $90 off and free shipping. Mm. Want to see a cool little trick that I learned watching Joanna Gaines? Yep. Watch this. Ready? Get that cheese. Mm -hmm. Flip it and dip it. You don't have to pay for those tips, y'all. <laughs> now back to the video. So You're going to try that? Y'all, it was so good. It was actually Every really meal we've had from them is actually fantastic. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. And, and it's fun to do. The benefits are truly there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's going to be links everywhere. Enjoy <laughs> that. But back to the tips. Back to the tips. Dear Younger Tori, follow those convictions you're feeling. They will protect you from a lot of shame and heartbreak. Because I feel like I never, like I've had a relationship with the Lord since I was younger, but I went through this season of rebellion mm -hmm. where I always felt conviction, but I rebelled against it. And every time I didn't listen to that little voice or that conviction from the Holy Spirit, it always led to shame or heartbreak. And I wish I would have just listened to what my yeah. mom and dad told me to do and listened to what the Holy Spirit told me to do. Fun little um, side note story about this. That first car accident that I told you guys that I was in, my mom did not want me driving that day. Oh, geez. Listen to your parents. 
Jeez. This is an interesting one. As I sat down to write down my notes of like what I would like to share, this one stuck out to me and I was like, oh wow, that's really interesting. And this tip is pay attention to what you're avoiding giving your attention to. Mm. And I've realized that there are times when I have obligations or I have responsibilities or things I need to do that I don't want to do. And I start to avoid and I start to just kind of distract myself. And, and it's so easy nowadays to distract ourselves and mm -hmm. procrastinate. You can get on your phone. You can mm. go play a sport. You can go watch a movie. You can go take a nap. You can go do other work. And that's one thing that I wish I would have just like ripped off the band-aid in so many circumstances and just got things done because I've realized that I wasn't not paying attention to those things because they weren't important to me. I wasn't paying attention to those things because I was scared of giving them importance because mm. I didn't want the confrontation yeah. or I didn't want to have to do the thing. But it's even just like writing a paper in college. Like I wish I would have just knocked them out earlier. Or if I have like a low bank account, like just check it and deal with it. Just quit avoiding checking your bank account because you're afraid of the number you're going to see. Yeah. You know, there's so many things that I wish I would have noticed that, wow, I'm purposely not paying attention to that. I'm purposely yeah. not responding to that text. Mm -hmm. I wonder why I'm not doing that. Yeah. All right, y'all. When he was talking, I just came up with another one. <laughs> what is it? What I was thinking was your identity is not found in your accomplishments or mm -hmm. your achievements. Yeah. That's something that I really struggled with after giving up my title as Miss Florida because I felt like my whole life I defined myself by the titles that I had won. And when I no longer was working for a title, I was like, who who am I? Yeah. And I truly had to figure out who I was in Christ mm -hmm. and let Christ She's got goosebumps. give me an identity and not be defined by winning, not be defined by my most recent accomplishment. Yeah. You know, because what if you don't win? What if that's, you know, not your life? Then where are you getting your identity from? Mm -hmm. And also not allowing other people to place identity on you. Your identity only comes from Christ alone. And what he says about you is always so much better. Yeah. So. I'm just going to piggyback off of that. One of mine is uh, don't find acceptance in other people's opinions. Yeah. Because after all, what they think of you is just an opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be factually proven true in some circumstances, but for the most part, that's just what they believe. And yeah. sometimes opinions can be really sweet, Yeah. but other times they cannot be so sweet. And so when you start living your life based off of what other people perceive about you, that's a big part of my testimony, yeah. which I'll share with you guys at a later date. I had no unique identity. Mm -hmm. I was every everything to everyone. Yeah. If you like this music, I love this music. If you like this sport, I love this sport. If you want to do this, yeah, I want to do that too. I would totally change who I am to be embraced and accepted by people um, just because I wanted to be liked. And who yeah. doesn't want to be liked? Yeah. Everyone wants to be liked and I didn't realize the deep-seated root it had in my heart that I didn't really have my own unique identity until I gave my life to Christ and then I started to peel back layers of who I actually am and this is the music I like and this is my favorite color and these are some hobbies I like and this is more my personality because mm -hmm. there were even instances where I would do something sweet for somebody but it was to appear loving, to appear being sweet and it wasn't even organic, it wasn't it was like real. An, an ego it wasn't my character, it yeah. was my my, my ego pushing me to do that. And that's why I'm so glad that after I gave my life to Christ, I developed my own identity and I started to feel less pressure to do things to be loved by other people because I felt ultimate love through Christ. Yeah, it's good. Speaking of other people, something I wrote down is look for the fruit in people's life and don't believe words that aren't attached to actions. Mm. Because I think that I was burned a lot younger because I believed people at their word and there was no action. And so I think when you're looking for who is in your inner circle, who you're allowing to speak into your life, make sure that the fruit in their life is fruit that you want in your life. Mm -hmm. um, because I think I was taking advice from a ton of people who, if I would have looked at their life, I, I didn't yeah. want that kind of fruit. And yet yeah. I was taking advice from them. Yeah, that was silly. And so when you're choosing your friends and who is going to like, you know, link arms with you or speak yeah. into you, it's really important to make sure that their words and actions align, yeah. especially relationship wise. Yeah. This is such a weird analogy. And I, I don't know if this is a worthy analogy, but think about going out to get food, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, whatever it may be. Whenever you look at the menu, you pick what you want because you're exchanging something for it. Mm -hmm. You're exchanging money, which you spent time in order mm -hmm. to get to yeah. receive food in order to enjoy a conversation, whatever, 
just to, to sustain your body. If someone brings back to you the literal opposite of what you ordered, most people are just gonna deal with it, you know, whatever. But you know, you probably like, oh no, that's not what I ordered. And when yeah. it comes to our friendships and who we let speak into our life, mm -hmm. we have to be picky and we have to pay attention. And actually, so my next tip was listen with your eyes. Mm -hmm. People can talk a big game, but if your yeah. eyes are closed, you don't know what's actually happening. Yeah. So listen with your eyes and pay attention to people's actions because they'll tell you exactly who they are and what they think of you with how they treat you and how they treat others around you. Yeah. And But that's not just like doom and gloom. Yeah. You can also see people's amazing fruit where you're totally. like, wow, I want to follow in their footsteps. Totally. I want. This is not just like a negative thing like, oh, bash people, no, judge them. No, it's for like it. we no. learned and now the people in our life, it's yeah. like, holy cow, amazing mm -hmm. humans. Yeah. And I feel like it's produced so much more fruit in mm -hmm. our life because we have such amazing people around us. Yeah, and we try to be amazing to them too. Yeah. This is not just like a- Not a take. Yeah, it's not a take, take, take. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a give and take. It's called phileo love, which is friendship love, which is yeah. I scratch your back, you scratch my back. There's like a unspoken agreement with friends. Yeah. And if what you're putting into it is not what you're getting out, just like what you put into that order, that restaurant is not what you got back, you need to stand up for yourself and you need to make healthy decisions yeah. for yourself. That's good. All right, my next tip is this. Two things on this one. It's one tip, but two things. Don't be afraid to ask why and don't be afraid to say no. Mm -hmm. Whenever I was younger, I would, I would just kind of accept things the way that they are. Yeah. You know, like even, I'll give you a great example. Whenever I went to undergrad and college, I accepted student loans because how else am I going to pay for school? Mm -hmm. I, I had a job throughout school. I actually basically my entire five years in undergrad, yeah. I had work, but I still needed more money. So I took out student loans and I didn't understand what they really were and it hurt. And mm -hmm. I didn't know that it was accruing interest. I didn't know what this was. And I should have honestly gone to a community college and I should have just worked and then gone to school and it taken a lot longer, but I wouldn't have graduated with tens of thousands of dollars in debt that's accruing so interest, interest from the day I take the loan. Yeah, I wish I would have asked like why it is this way and what can I do about it? Or I wish I would have just said no because I signed up for something that I thought would be like, you know, I'm not even using my degree, mm -hmm. plural. I'm, I'm not using yeah. those at all. I was walking around with the mindset that I was lucky to be there. Don't get me wrong, that was an actual privilege for me to, to do that, mm -hmm. to go to school and become educated. But like, I could have learned all that from YouTube or a public library, <laughs> let's just be honest. I'm, yeah. I'm be like, I, know. I, you know me, I'm like, unless you wanna be a doctor or a lawyer or like you need a license to, to pursue mm -hmm. your career, yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of college, you can just learn it elsewhere. Yeah. And I, I, I felt like I was privileged to be there, but they were taking my money. And they're like, oh yeah, you're yeah. lucky to be here. Keep giving me money, Chad. Keep giving yeah. me money. You're lucky yeah. to be here. And I wish I would have stood up for myself. But whenever I started my master's program mm -hmm. in my mid twenties, I was just like, I ended up dropping out because I realized that what I'm exchanging, so the time that went in to get this much money mm -hmm. to pay for this degree was not worth it. Yeah. I was like, what you're teaching me is not worth the time and money I'm putting into this. Yeah. And I wish I had that strength to say no, to just be like, oh yeah. no, this is not a good trade. Yeah. But I just accepted it. So I actually only have one more. Um, I have one left because uh, I piggybacked off of one of yours. Got it. This one's deep for me. It's gonna get a little weird. Don't join the rat race. Don't subscribe to it. And society is, how do I say this without sounding crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Society is structured a certain way, uh, whether you like it or hate it, it's structured in a certain way. And we've experienced a lot of that as we have grown up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to what we want to study in school and what jobs pay, and then also ha if you can afford to buy a house, there's you can start to see a structure and it's not built around something that is good for you. Mm -hmm. For example, a lot of what we perceive, and we could be wrong on this, but I don't think I am, a lot of, we, a lot of what we perceive is that society wants you to be in debt. They mm -hmm. want you to keep up with to your neighbor. Dependent. They want you to distract yourself and to not critically think. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I wish I would have been yeah. more of a free thinker whenever I was younger. I yeah. wish I wouldn't have accepted the pressures that that is kind, that are kind of surrounding me, which is like, yeah. oh, I don't have this cool outfit. Because mm -hmm. when I think about the stuff I was worried about from age 10 to 28. I don't have the newest iPhone. Yeah, I do I have the newest phone? Do I have this outfit? Mm -hmm. Is my car cool? What yeah. am I like am I traveling? What's my Instagram look like? All yeah. these different things that mean really mm -hmm. 
like nothing in the grand aspect of life. Can't take it ahead. And so it doesn't mean you can't enjoy those things. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have broken free of the rat race because I yeah. stressed so much at a younger age because I was just trying to be this idealized version of myself mm -hmm. that I actually, whenever I picture him, I actually don't want to be that because I don't mm -hmm. like that person very much. That person is obsessed with other people's opinions and and looking a certain way um and material things and that's not actually i don't want to be like that i mm -hmm. want healthy loving friendships in my life mm -hmm. and that person wasn't seeking those that yeah. person was seeking to find love and things and so but that's what i mean by the rat race is to become financially literate yeah. so you can't trust school to teach you these things you need yeah. to learn it on your own and so you need to just go ahead and decide right now I'm going to educate myself to make sure that I'm not just, I'm not just going to follow what I'm told to do all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to critically think for myself. Yeah. Okay. So we also have a couple of our patrons. They sent in a few little dear younger me's and they're so good. I'll put them on the screen, but I'll also read them out. I'll give them some snaps. So Angela, we love her. She says, I feel like I could write a book about what I'd tell my younger self. I would definitely say don't live of someone else's revel don't live out of someone else's revelation or of sermons and actually dive into God's word. Find your identity in him and know your worth. Have boundaries and don't let anyone cross them. Forgiving is great, but don't stay in the situation. And it's not God's will for you to change someone or save someone. Only God can do that and he has it all under control. Don't put too much pressure on yourself and try to be perfect. Just enjoy life with God. Honestly, I could go on LOL bye. <laughs> I love her. Snaps. Funny. So good. Sarah, she said something I'd say to younger Sarah is that she doesn't have to deserve being loved. It's something that can't be earned or maintained no matter how perfect you try to be. Real love is unconditional and she'll find that out only in God, not in people. And I'd also tell her she can't pull people out of the water if she's drowning too. Oh, Sarah, better drop that fax machine. Okay good okay kezi said i would tell my younger self not to live according to the drive of earthly things but live according to his calling i would also tell the younger kezia you are a princess and your father the king of all kings loves you so much don't let fear drive you for what your father in heaven is always with you so good and then kiana said something i tell my younger self is Yo, Keeks, it's actually pretty cool to be bold in your faith. Like, let people see that it is God's love and faithfulness that sets you apart. So good. Evelyn, she said, I would tell my younger self that she doesn't need to try to be normal or refrain from being truly herself to fit in or be loved because she is made in God's image and God ultimately loves her. So good. And we love you. Sarah, Sarah said, I would tell my younger self that she doesn't need to hold on to things so tightly. Mm. God takes things away because he has something better ahead. Life is too short to hang on to things that you can't change or that are going to slip away. That's good. So good. I'm going to find a picture and put it right here, but it's one of my favorite pictures and it really impacted me. It was a picture of Jesus and he's holding this massive teddy bear behind his back. And then there's this little girl mm -hmm. and she has her little teddy bear and she's like, but Jesus, I love it. And he's mm -hmm. like, just hand it to me. Like, mm -hmm. give it to me. Trust me with that little teddy bear yeah. because he has something so much bigger and so much mm -hmm. greater, but we actually have to trust him. We actually just talked about this in a podcast, but only the Lord, like literally only the Lord, we can give him something so small, something so tiny and he can take that and multiply it and that's why he's so good and so learning to surrender and not hold things so tightly is not only going to bring so much more peace to your soul but it's also going to bring so much more fruit into your life also i'm just going to say this because as i'm drinking my starbucks i just know y'all are going to ask me what my starbucks order is because that always happens i am drinking a vanilla cream cold brew with the sweet cream cold foam on top and it's delicioso. Delicioso. All right, y'all. Well, I think that was all of our tips. I feel like we could come up with like 30 more. more. Yeah. Um, we do have another podcast kind of on the same topic. So we'll link the podcast below mm -hmm. if you're interested. We kind of did like what we wish we would have known in our 20s. Yeah. Um, in that one, which mm -hmm. had some different tips. And so 
We also want to give Green Chef another huge shout out. Thank you for sponsoring this video. We absolutely love working with you. And you guys, make sure to take advantage of that $90 off code. It's The code is 90masters, and you go to greenchef.us slash 90masters. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you support them, you're supporting us, and that means a lot. I think that's it, y'all. Thanks for hanging in there with us. We hope it was encouraging. If it was, if it did encourage you, make sure to share it, share it with a friend, send it to family, whatever. Um, and if you're not a part of the Masters fam already, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like this video, all the normal YouTuber things. What did I do to deserve this type of disrespect? You come to me in the day I film a YouTube video, and you ask me to try a cheap green chef. But you didn't mention there's $90 off and free shipping. Let me tell you this, that's enough for I can't refuse. I'm gonna sign up in the link below. <laughs> that was really good. I gotta go. That was really good. <laughs> dude, 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 dude.